Well, this is exciting. Just saw the news. My Converse is red. Case dismissed. Let's talk about that. Morning, everyone. So I was about to make my video on why I think the Nikon Z8 will be a game changer. I know a lot of people are interested in the Nikon Z8 before the rumors, but as a person who myself has been utilizing the Z9 and seeing all the video codecs on it, I was very excited about the fact that Nikon's announcement have that sign up there. I know a lot of people out there are thinking photo only, but I've been saying from the beginning, I think this is going to be mainly a video camera. So I'll probably finish that video, but let me get this information out here to you guys and kind of talk about what that means. So if you've heard, Nikon put out the Z9 and they had their own version of raw software internally. They use Interpix Tico Raw software to do compression and they've called it NRAW. So NRAW in the Z9 can record up to 8.3K. That's RAW internally. Now, if you understand how RAW works, most cameras, when you're putting out RAW, it's a lot of data. Sometimes the camera may overheat. So these cameras usually have a fan built onto them. Those that can do RAW and don't have a fan or are not capable of handling it, will output it externally through the HDMI port, SDI for the more expensive cameras. But let's stick with hybrids for now. By implementing Chico RAW software, Nikon was able to do RAW internally, and they call the version NRAW. My understanding is that the files that it creates are smaller than EPL, and even App ProRes files. So that's a big thing if anyone wants to do RAW and to be able to do it internally to your camera without an external recorder. That does one major thing. It cuts down the cost of you having to buy an external recorder to record raw files. Now, the lawsuit being dismissed seems to give Nikon full permission to do what they want. Based on what I found online, it doesn't give much information as far as what occurred during the dismissal. Did Nikon pay uh, Red to use their patent? Um, or, you know, is Red just saying, we're gonna give up this stuff? But according to the information here, you know, it seems as though maybe the lawyers decided that, hey, if this thing wasn't as good and Nikon is going to beat us, we get to keep our patents online. Um, other people can't come and sue us. Or bigger than that, the patent becomes invalidated. So this is a win for Nikon. It's a win for us. It's going to be a win for everybody who wants to implement internal RAW on their camera. I know Canon does it, but I understand that because Red's uh, camera is used at Nikon, sorry, Canon's mount, they may have a deal that Red allows them to do RAW internally by them allowing them to use their mount. So we shall see. But for now, that's what it is. And I think, you know, going to the Z8, based on what the Z9 has, it's going to be an awesome thing. The Z9 is a game changer in its class. And a lot of people who are not paying attention to Nikon haven't really paid attention to this. And I'll say, even photographers, professionals who bought this camera, have not been paying much attention to the photo side of the camera. Now for those people who are real hybrid shooters, yeah, they understand this. Now I know a lot of you are gonna say, well, nobody shoots 8K raw. Yeah, people do. You don't see a lot of 8K videos out there, but they do exist. I've actually tried out the 8K on my Sony a7R5 and the quality is really good. Now, certainly YouTube goes up to 8K, but um, we don't have a lot of 8K content. And people say, well, I don't really see the difference. There's some big things that you can see when you are, well, there's some big differences in the quality when it comes to using 8K. Talking about Nikon, they basically said, the quality is so good, you can pull an image from a 4K, sorry, from an 8K recording and use it as a photo. So what does Nikon has in their 8.3K RAW? It's a 12-bit. If you know about Atomos and Blackmagic RAW recorders, they're usually recording 12-bit. Good stuff, right? Not being able to do that internally inside the camera, that's a whole other level. Now this got me thinking about the Z8 and what that means for Nikon. Because I said, man, if this thing was in a smaller camera, I would want it. The Z9 actually feels good in the hand from a photography perspective. 
since version 2.0 when they enabled the 8.3k raw Nikon's had a host of different um, codecs inside of it they do Apple raw as well so Apple raw as in 422 422 HQ all of that's built in there so it depends on what you want and that's going from 4k all the way up to 8k so depending on what you want to shoot you have everything built into this camera at the price point $5,500 let's call it around six grand taxes depends on where you are oh you know your state or your country doesn't charge tax then it's $5,500 so that's a good price if you think in the long term people are saying well Nikon's autofocus isn't that great okay they've been tweaking it and it's been getting a whole lot better when it comes to video the eye tracking is something that helps a lot and in a video like sitting here talking to folks this is more important if you're going to be filmed with the camera a lot of times these guys are adding manual lens with follow focus system that's a whole other level of thing we won't get into in this video but keep in mind autofocus is for semi-professionals amateurs who just want to make sure we have things in focus when you get more on the professional side you've gone over to manual stuff in one of my videos i did post that i believe the reason why nikon is delaying the z8 is because of the patent with red and i think they're waiting to get some kind of resolution we heard that the z8 should have come out over the summer then in the fall maybe over christmas we got nothing so here we are in April and now we got an announcement and a couple days after the announcement we just saw that the loss has been dismissed so this has probably been going on for some time much like the patent information that I've been finding it shows that there's some good text coming and again in that video I'm putting together about the Z8 and why I think it's going to be a game changer I'll talk more about the patents and some of the things that I see coming that I think could be implemented inside the camera so stay tuned for that one is everyone utilizing the Z8 or thinking about getting the Z8 going to be doing YouTube videos? No. We're talking people who do events, who are doing weddings, or you know things along those lines where autofocus is going to be important. Now, these guys tend to shoot raw because they want the best quality as well. Not everyone, because if you don't want to do any editing and you want to save time, you don't have to shoot raw. The great thing about Nikon cameras that I know from personal use is that the image quality straight on the camera looks awesome. If you go to the raw side, they do have LUTs that you can apply to fix things and get them closer to what you want. But generally speaking, when people want to edit their photos, they want to put their own spin on what the image quality is. So that is an important thing. Now imagine having the Z8. It's a bit smaller than the Z9. According to the pictures, the battery grip area is gone. Some people will say that's going to eat into battery time. You can plug in a battery pack and you can run with that. So you'll be fine from there. If you build out a rig, you know you're going to use some kind of V-mount battery to do with that. But again, that's just going on a whole deeper road. But for those budding videographers, filmmakers who are starting out, certain cameras, when you're doing that kind of stuff, you want to have some kind of fan to cool the system. Don't know what kind of magic Nikon has worked with the Z9, but without using RAW, because we haven't heard the specifications on RAW, if you're going to shoot um, for a long period of time, you know, what we would do. But we know 8.3K, it'll do up to two hours. That's 8K video, not 8.3, sorry, 8K video. So 4K is a no brainer. That's easy for that camera. Most people are going to be shooting 4K, maybe up to 6K if you want that better quality. And then you can, you know, put it in a 4K timeline and get a really good looking picture. You can do the same thing with 8K and come out with a good looking thing. Now, when you think about that, forget the, the raw side. I mean, it, it's cool if you can do that, but if you don't want to do that, you're taking the 8K capture and putting it down to 4K. Some cameras that came out recently are saying they're doing 6K compression into 4K. Nikon kind of says in the Z9, you can get a 4K image from an 8K capture. This is what has been getting me excited about the Z8. And I know a lot of us, you know, former Nikon shooters, oh, sorry, current Nikon shooters, I am a former Nikon shooter, are thinking, you know, we don't really care much about the video. The guys out there who have been Sony fans and see what Sony's doing, uh, Canon is doing, now Panasonic, 
Nikon has never been in the sphere of video stuff big time. So the Z9, most people can't afford it. So most people didn't even think about it and what it could do. I count myself as one of those folks. I saw the specifications, they look great, but didn't know really much what that is like. Not until I got my FX30. I tried to raw on it. Yes, it generates big files. I'd have to do some editing. You know, when I got that camera, if you guys want to go back into my history, you will see that I complain about what the color science was like. Well, I said color science, but how the color basically didn't look the same as Nikon's. I've learned later that you can edit and get what you want. I've learned how to do some color grading and I've put out some, I think, you know, good color stuff from the FX30. Right now, I'm utilizing the A7R5. This is an 8K capture right now. What I like about this is that the quality looks good. I've shot it a few times just to kind of test it out in the beginning. And I, I like what it gives. Of course, it's going to end up in a 4K timeline. So imagine you're starting with RAW and then you can compress that down into 4K and you have all that quality there. Your picture is going to look really awesome. And most people are probably like, eh, it's just a film, it's just a video, but they will notice there's a quality difference. So, with the Z8 coming, and it seems like it's going to be video focused from what we're seeing, how many of you guys that are out there, whether you are Nikon shooters or not, are planning on getting this camera if all the specs that we've seen so far is met and exceeded? I'm going to talk about the Nikon Z8 stuff in another video, but I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of background and some information on the red lawsuits and what that means for us as people who are recording video. And I think this is going to be big for Nikon because a lot of people who have not been considering Nikon right now, people who have been utilizing the Z8 that are not Nikon shooters, and there's been a few videos out there, they're saying, wow, this, this, this camera is great. We would never consider Nikon for video, but this thing is fantastic. Now you have a smaller camera, which is going to be a smaller price point. Yeah, we hear that it's going to be 5,000, but that's 5,000 euros, which should calculate to around 3,800, 3,900 US. Some people are speculating that it may end up being at 3,500 US. We really don't know until Nikon releases it. I'm speculating that they may give us two cameras, one for photographers, one for videographers. They both do video, but one will probably have the raw capability built in. Yeah, before we go. Just see that there's a red overheating warning on the camera. I've been recording 8K. This is about 10 or so minutes now. Um, yeah, I usually record long and then chop it up if I make mistakes. I think I did pretty good in this one. But just to let you guys know, this camera has no fan. Kept me recording, overheating warning came on, didn't shut down. But you know, this is one of the reasons we talk about if you have 8K and something with a higher codec, you're gonna need a camera with a fan that can manage the heat. This is not raw, this is only 8K, 24 frames per second. So I just wanna drop this in here before I wrap up the video. All right, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, please get subscribed. I know there's a lot of people watching my videos, but not many people are subscribed. Very close to that 1K mark. Come on guys, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It's nothing to you, it's free but it means a lot to me and the channel. Okay, taking off. I'll see you guys next time.